All right, today we're going to talk about how you can train your own ChatGPT GPT-4 comparable models at a budget under $100. So uh, we will be talking about the centralization of AI, basically the monopolization of AI now. Open AI, it's keep building a very big model, and there seems to be a solution to every NLP problem. A lot of uh, people working on many different projects now suddenly become irrelevant because uh, ChatGPT GPT-4 can solve most of the problems without any learning. NLP to a certain extent is reduced to prompt engineering. Basically, it's you just set out a prompt and you call it API from OpenAI and you get a result. This is like very demoralizing. It's kind of progress and something also bad to researchers because you don't have any control to API. You couldn't modify the model. So not much research you can do, to be honest. What you can do is evaluation. So it's very demoralizing. But how can we find more more freedom in such a crazy time. It's uh, what we want to talk about. It's basically the methods that you can train your own chat GPT comparable model with like very, very low budget. So we'll be talking about this solution and this solution is called Alpaca. That would talk about how it works and how you can do it. And some anecdotal performance uh, comparison. And the, in the end, I will talk about a few short directions. What you can do in terms of a re research uh, topic. So this is got to be very interesting uh, video. If you would like to receive more v deep learning videos like, like this, support this channel by subscribing that. Otherwise, let's dive right in. So what's prompt engineering? Prompt engineering is the way that you interact with uh, language model. It's kind of a light way of programming. In the past, you need to write a lot of code, you train a model, you tell a model to learn from training data. But now the language model is just too powerful, like a chat GPT, GPT-4, you can just tell the model what to do. For example, you can describe your task and ask a model to do the task, and model would do it for you. And like NLP, not, not, not required coding anymore, which is not fun anymore, but it's kind of like, I would say it's like progress, also sadness at the same time. But as a researcher, how can you find more freedom to do it? It's this solution is uh, basically proposed by Stanford. This model is called Alpaca. Alpaca is a model they learn things from GPT 3.5, or I would just, uh, say code it chat GPT. So you can use GPT-4, chat GPT, anything to generate data. Then this data, use this data to teach uh, Alpaca. So I want to go uh, some de into some details about how uh, Alpaca is trained. So its base model is from Llama. Uh, Llama 7 billion parameter. It's a, also a language model they trained by Meta. And this language model does now have instruction following capabilities, it's just simple next word prediction. So if you tell this model what to do, you, you put some instruction to the model and ask the model to do a task, like summarization, this model just won't perform well because it, it just didn't, it wasn't trained on that kind of instruction. Alpaca does, so what it did was to use chat GPT to generate uh, response for the instruction. You feed a lot of instruction and the input to ChatGPT and ask ChatGPT to generate response. And uh, they just keep feeding data to ChatGPT and collect the response from ChatGPT. And they do this repeat again and again. They have like 52,000 examples. And this is called instruction following examples. And just use the, find, use this data to fine tune Llama and supervise fine tuning basically, and then you got alpaca. Some detail into that is like you couldn't like just manually <laughs> get uh, fifty two thousand instructions right and just feed them because creating fifty two thousand instructions examples is too hard. Even GPT Chat GPT will give you responses, but it's just not really foreseeable. So what they did was they create some C task and ask uh, Chat GPT to to get the similar similar task with the instruction, right? Then they use, they feed 25 examples to ChatGPT and ChatGPT generate 52 exam, instruction example and then generate response. So that's how this model works. It's pretty simple. It's just to generate, let ChatGPT to generate data and let uh, Llama model, very basic um, language model to learn. That's it, that's it. This is really like what Sam Elman said. You should just do what, what works, right? A lot of uh, researchers uh, have a problem, including me. If one method works, 
we don't want to keep digging into it anymore. But distillation, this is just distillation, knowledge distillation. It's very simple. You use a large, large model t as a teacher model to generate data and you use student models to learn. So in this case, DaVinci, text DaVinci 3 is instruct GPT, generate data, and then use Llama data to learn it, to learn this, to learn the knowledge from text DaVinci. Okay, so uh, something I want to say is text DaVinci is not chat GPT, it's like something before ChatGPT, but it's pretty similar to ChatGPT, I would say. Um, so, uh, and how much do they spend to train this model, Alpaca? They only spend three hours on a A100 GPU, which costs less than $100. So that's why I say you can train your own ChatGPT at cheap. It's not that hard. It's like surprisingly easy. And this is really not what I expect. I thought you need more instruction following examples to do it. And good thing is they just spent $600 to generate 52,000 instruction following examples. So if you, want, if you want more, you can definitely generate more. It's pretty cheap thanks to ChatGPT. And I think they use InstructGPT, which price is like 10x of ChatGPT. So if you use ChatGPT, you probably only spend we only spent $60, right? So that's alpaca in nutshell. It's very easy. And it's, this method is model agnostic. You can use the same framework for any kind of model, as long as it can, it can do sequence to sequence modeling. So uh, something that I want you to know, because this data, uh, this model um, is only for academic research and uh, any commercial use is prohibited. Why? Because uh, First of all, Lama has already said this is non-commercial license. And also OpenAI says if you use their data, their data to train a model anything, you cannot compete with OpenAI. So you need must be very cautious about this. If you're a researcher, I think it's fine. But if you're using this for commercial, don't. This is really light in this area because like it's really in such a crazy time, um, NLP researchers, a lot of people worry, oh, what do I do for next? What, what, what can I do for research? You guys, I was working on like a sentiment analysis model. Now you can boom, bah, chat GBD, API self, everything. So what you can do in terms of research topic, let's say you're a PhD student now, uh, there's just a lot of future directions and this brought up by Alpaca. Thanks, Alpaca. So uh, something I want to discuss with you, how, First things, how capabilities arise from the training recipe. So basically it's like, why you train the model, fine tune the model on this such small amount of uh, instruction following training data and model kind of. So I just want to show you how crazy this capability is. For example, this is a chat GBT, right? Uh, I asked chat GBT to tell me some close parking lots some parking lots is close to this location, which is in downtown Vancouver, and gives me all the locations that's close to it. And naturally, I uh, Google it, Google it, and it's all close to it. It's very good answer. And you may wonder how can ChatGPT understand geo geolocation? What's the relative uh, distance between these things? Um, there's some explanation. Uh, but I'm not going to detail now, but this is a certainly in very, very impressive capability. But does Alpaca has that? Because according to uh, Stanford, Alpaca, they evaluate Alpaca on several data sets. It's quite similar to, the performance is quite similar to uh, ChatGPT. Some flaw of this, I think it's like this, this data set is created by their own students, so maybe bias. Uh, so that's why I did some anecdotal evaluation. I think my personal feeling is it's not as good as ChatGPT, but it's close enough. It's good enough. In, very impressive. It's like 25x smaller model and have such good bit. So let's just see. I ask the same questions. And Alpaca just give me answers, which it's very, very good because I know of them quite close. It's not exactly close because you can see their the answer is mostly about hotels, parking lot. Why is that different from chat GBD? This is something interesting, but it's already very impressive. And if you uh, are curious, definitely go to their demo website. I will put it in my description down below. So how can this, the good thing is they release a lot of things. They release, uh, first of all, a demo, which you can just try. Uh, try around that's very good very good and then they have 56,000 of data 
that you can just train your own instruction following stuff. It's very easy to use. It's a JSON data format. You can just use hug and face any kind of things and train some on some kind of like small foundation model, bar model, anything like that. And also the code to generate the data. So I would say it's pretty good. They haven't released Llama models yet, but I believe they may do that in the future. So play around, it's pretty cool. Learn these things. And what properties of a base model do you need? Do you need uh, just a plain language model? Or what kind of model, base model that you, you can use it? And what happens when you scale up or scale down? I am not interested in scale up because if you scale up, it's like chat GPT, right? What if you scale down? Can we have like even smaller model and still have the same cap similar capability? 7 billion to 1 billion, they say 300 million model. Bird base model, can bird base model do? Maybe bar based model, that kind of thing, right? And what properties of instruction data is needed? Uh, for now, they give, they follow this instruct, self-instruct paper. It's a very good paper, by the way. They follow this paper and uh, they created a certain data sets. And you can see it's very uh, comprehensive categories of, this is just like, they don't have any uh, assumption to it, so just feel a diverse data. But what kind of property do you need? Maybe we don't need 52,000 examples. Maybe we just need 50 examples, right? What's that? And last point, like what alternative to use uh, self-instruct on the text diversity through so just, just just like, can we use something else apart from just call, calling ChatGPT? We can, can we use some else data that already exists? Because if you could do it, you can use it for commercial use. Uh, now, so far you need, you cannot because uh, it's on their terms of the condition. So that's pretty exciting. I was really, really say, And definitely I would want, to, like to see like people train this on doing the same thing for a much smaller model and see what happened. Can we have like very, very small model and do the same thing? Um, very exciting, very exciting time to uh, be work to be working on NLP. If you're a PhD student, don't worry. There's there's still some topics that you can do. Um, that's it. If you would like to receive more NLP deep learning uh, videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. Give me some support if you already stay until now. All right. So uh, other than that, I will see you next time.